another beautiful morning, guys. Get up early, get the chores done before the kids wake up. You know, I'm really good about saying good morning, but I'm not so great about signing off at the end of the day. I forget to do that a lot. Good morning, ladies. Cats are fighting over there. Got grass seed on my seat, on my, on my boots. Oh my goodness, those cats. They brought me a mouse the other morning. I was very happy about that. This fellow's gotten really big. Remember this guy? That's the one I had to help patch. I've let him out with the other girls a few times and they're still beating him up a little bit. But he's almost as big as them now. I think some of my ladies are hiding their eggs somewhere because I have eight hens out in the big coop, that free range. And I'm getting one to three eggs from them a day, but they've got their red combs and they, when you get close, they do the huddle thing like that. They do that because they're, they're prepared for a, a rooster to cover them. So I'm like, you're doing all the signs that you should be laying eggs, but I uh, don't see the eggs. So I might keep them locked up in the coop for a couple days just to see if maybe they're laying someplace else instead of laying where they're supposed to. So if you have chickens, it is totally normal for the first eggs they lay to be really small. I got out to the chicken coop today and found two really small eggs. Now this is, this side right here is my Wyandotte's egg. This is from one of my new hens. I got two teeny tiny eggs in the nesting box today. Super exciting. That means my new girls are finally laying. So exciting. So I just wanted to share that. Don't freak out if the first egg from your chickens is really tiny or even doesn't have much in it. It's totally normal. Good morning, Scraps. How you doing, girl? You comfy? Chilling? She was letting me know yesterday that she was not happy with her food. Um, when I had gone to the store and gotten food, they didn't have the kind that I normally get her, so I had to get something different. And so she went into the chicken coop and she knocked down, what is that, a 10 gallon? I think it's a 10 gallon feeder of chicken food and rolled it all over the place and spilled it everywhere. She did not like the food that I got her. So I ended up giving her some of the chicken food and then she was happy. I think part of the reason that she might get out sometimes is because she's looking for something else because she really likes, um, there's certain scrap foods that she really likes and I don't always have those. And I think sometimes when she's trying to get out, it's because she's like, hey, I didn't get what I wanted to eat today. So I'm gonna go look for it myself. So yesterday my niece and my daughter and I were out here we were digging holes and planting some cabbages, um, staggering it back and forth a little bit, trying to get some stuff planted. I know it's still like mid eighties as the highs, but looking at the calendar for frost dates, I wanted to get some stuff planted. Um, so today I am trying to go over here on this side and work on getting the weeds pulled and get some broccoli planted over here. I need to tear all these sunflowers out too. The tomatoes I may tear out if I need the space. If I don't need the space, I'm just gonna leave them go. They're not producing much right now. Um, a lot of them just got completely eaten by the hornworms, but they might bounce back as the weather cools down a little bit. So I have a hard time pulling out stuff that still has potential if I don't need the space for something else. So I've got my watermelon table out today too. Let me take a poll. Do you guys like, prefer, if you stop at a place and the person is there to say hi, or do you prefer to just be left alone to make your choices and do your own thing? I'm curious, let me know. I just had a lady come by and get some watermelons, and it was so fun just getting to chat and getting to know her. 
and seeing how excited she is about getting some watermelons that are fresh grown from the garden because she's not able to do it anymore. And it just had me thinking, ah, I love doing this stuff, but I love, love, love interacting with people. And I'm so excited to be able to put my produce out and get to meet all these fabulous people that stop by and like love gardening too or farm life too and oh it's just it's amazing being around people just really fills my heart up with so much joy I really love being around people all right got a row of broccoli planted probably should have said how I was doing this so I have, you know, pretty thick mulch out here. So I'm just digging down until I get to the dirt, planting one or two seeds in each of these holes, just depending on how I feel like it with each hole, and then not covering it back up with mulch. So I'm leaving it open so that it can sprout. Once it's big enough, I will put the mulch back around it as it grows. Hey, are you my garden helper today? I was thinking since I'm constantly trying to find ways to um, like get stuff done and still have the kids with me uh, that it would be a fabulous idea if I were to put like I'm not sure exactly what maybe like a concrete slab some kind of area that um, is not going to be like a potential for ants to build nests but then that my son could sit and play with his water tables or with a kiddie pool or something in the garden space while I am gardening so we can still all be together and get stuff done just kind of, you know, making more of those spaces where we can enjoy our time outdoors together. I'm kind of experimenting with this a little bit. I still have my broccolis inside under the grow light that are going to be going out potentially the end of September, but I don't have enough space to grow all the stuff that I want to. So I'm kind of doing a little mix where I'm trying to start some stuff outside, have some stuff inside. I have a much harder time timing the cool weather crops like um, for spring and fall. The summer stuff I don't struggle as much with because there's so much growing time for summer here that if I don't get it out right away at the perfect time, it's fine if it goes out a little bit later. There's plenty of time for it to grow. But with the spring and the fall stuff, there's such a fine line between planting it too early and planting it too late and does it have enough time and is it gonna be too cold? Is it gonna be too hot? It's so much more weather dependent because it's much more um, like, temperamental about being too hot so and and here it can be unpredictable one year we had in the 90s at the end of September so it's really kind of more challenging to find that perfect timing for those fall crops Hi. You got some weeds? Go ahead, put it in the wheelbarrow. Up there. Yeah, that's it. Put it in there. Yeah, yay! Good job. So this will be a little bit of an experiment comparing the broccoli and cabbages that were started indoors to the ones that were started outdoors. So if you would like to follow along with this experiment, don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep you guys posted on how this goes. Um, it's been super fun hanging out today and I will see you next time. Bye.